So you have the brand new Fire Stick Lite, or maybe you have the slightly older second generation Fire TV Cube, and you're wondering what's the best way to really maximize the performance of your device and really just get the best from it. Well, as you know, Amazon do really fill these devices with lots of different bloatware, lots of things running in the background, and over time, it really can just grind your devices to a halt especially with these cheaper devices like the Fire Stick Lite, which only comes with one gig of RAM. And the more things you have running in the background, the less free memory you'll have on your device. And that really is one of the biggest causes of buffering on your device is when your device starts running out of memory. So wouldn't it be amazing if you could open up a simple toolbox and then literally with just a couple of clicks, disable all of these Amazon processes running in the background. Guess what guys, in this video today, let me present to you the brand new Fire OS 7 Debloat tool and literally guys, just a couple of clicks, disable all of these background processes and just watch your Fire Stick fly. So in this video today, let me show you exactly how you can get the latest version of this Debloat tool and I'll take you through each of these processes one step at a time just so you can fully understand the implications of disabling them. So do take a moment to hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're started. new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. So let's now open up the Debloat tool for the first time. So when you start this application for the first time, you'll have to authorize ADB because this application does use ADB to block or unblock those processes running on your system. So I always recommend click on this, always allow, and click on OK. So the first thing that the application will do is to do a scan of your system and show you whether these processes are disabled or not. If the box next to each process is unticked, that means it's not disabled. If it's ticked, it means that it's disabled. So for a quick test, if I click on these two up here and clicking on the play button on the top right then applies that change. So, so for example, we can see the first five, which is one, two, three, four, five are for Prime Video. So if you're somebody that doesn't use Prime Video, you only use your Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube for third party applications, then why should these five processes run in the background and consume that valuable CPU and memory resource? So in your example, if you're not using Prime Video, you can just tick these five up here. Now the next three are for system updates. So if you're happy with your Fire Stick, you don't want Amazon to make any changes on your device or to push any kind of updates to applications that you're not using like Amazon Free Time or IMDB TV, you can then block those updates. So let's say for example, you want to do that. So I'm gonna click on this, click on this and click on this. And again, to apply the change, if you go to the top, now the easiest way to get to the top is just pressing the right on the remote. We can see we're now on the play button. I can now press the select on that. That then goes ahead and disables those processes. So if I back out of that now, we can see we only have these three things ticked. So those three things are disabled. And to quickly test that, if I now press the home key, watch what happens when I click on select. And we get an update error straight away. So that just confirms that disabling those three processes means that our device won't get any updates from Amazon. So Amazon can't push any changes to you. Amazon can't push any application updates to you. You basically are in control of your device. And whenever you want to receive an update, you can just go back to the Debloat toolbox and enable those three processes again. Okay, let's back out of that. Now the next two are for the system status monitor. So if you do use the built-in feature to look at your CPU and also your free memory, you can leave these enabled. This one is for those any &E applications like the lifetime, like the history and lifetime movies. This one is for accessing your USB drive. So if you want to save something to a USB drive or access content on a USB drive, then don't disable this one. Uh, this one is the news. Now this one is a very important one. So for the Fire Stick lights, which actually have the guide button, which is this one here. If you disable this, actually let's do that now. So let me click on that. Let's click on play. Let's back out of that. If I now press the guide button, it doesn't work anymore because that process for the live guide or for the live TV guide has now been disabled on our system. Now, if you have one of those JVC Fire TVs, which is basically a smart TV running Fire OS, 
And as long as that runs Fire OS 7, if you disable that process, then you block the ability to change your HDMI input. So you can't go from one source to another if that process is disabled. So let's go back into that now. Let's now enable that process. So I'm now going to untick it. Click on the play button. And now watch what happens when I press the guide button. And that really is the true beauty of the Debloat Toolbox that really without any kind of you know ADB knowledge or any kind of command line, we can super easily block processes, disable things. And if for whatever reason we want to turn something back on or we discover that something is not working properly anymore, with just one click, as you've seen now, you can once again enable that process. So to give a thumbs up for that. And if any of you guys are still with me in this video, then if you leave the comment below flying fire stick, then I know you've made it this far in the video, which I really appreciate. I'll then heart that comment. So let's say you want to disable everything. What's the quickest way to do that? So let's go to the top. Let's press this. Everything is now highlighted. Now, one key thing I've noticed here, guys, which I will show you in real time that when you do highlight everything, so everything is now highlighted and press the play button on the top right. So this quickly goes through and disables everything. And you'll notice that it's a lot faster than the Fire OS 6 devices like the 4K Fire Stick. So that's everything disabled now. But now watch what happens when I press back. I've noticed on the Fire Stick Lite that it does seem to lock the actual remote control. Um, the A word still works. So for example, I can say open settings. So that part or functionality still works, but the navigation seems to be disabled until you restart the device. So what I need to do now is just press the play and the select buttons together for six seconds. So let me do that now. And within a couple of seconds, we get that message. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 200 members whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff. We can provide support to each other and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. And we can see now that the remote control functionality has been restored again. So it just requires one reboot. And if I now go back into the toolbox, and this is a great way to confirm that even after a reboot, what happens with those processes? So let's open up the toolbox. So we can confirm that even after a reboot, all of these processes are still disabled on my device, freeing up that valuable system memory. Now let me just quickly go through the list here. So, so these are part of the A word. So if you are using that, then leave these two enabled. Now this one, the com Amazon Logan is for the voice view, but also for the text banner. So if you are using that feature, don't disable this one. So this was an interesting one. So if you do use one of those smart home doorbells like Ring or maybe Nest, and you access that via the A word, don't disable this one. And this one is for IMDB TV. This is a screensaver. Now these three are very interested and many thanks to all the people that left me messages and confirmed that these three are required for casting from your phone. So if you do use the YouTube application on your phone, then you press the cast button on the YouTube app and that beams the video onto your Amazon device. If you use that feature, make sure you don't disable these three here. Okay, and then this is for Amazon free time. This is for the Fire TV recast. Now these ones don't have any labels next to them, but if any of you guys work out exactly the implications of disabling these, then please do leave me a comment below or send me an email. Okay, so to begin this process on your Fire OS 7 device, make sure you've got ADB debugging enabled, then open up Downloader. Inside Downloader, we can use a special code to get to my website, which is just 53402. So type that in and click on go. Now, when you get to my website, you want to head over to the hamburger menu, which is the one with the three lines. Click on that and click on tutorials. And the latest tutorial in the list will be how to get the latest Fire OS 7 Develop tool. So let's open that up. And here we are, so let's scroll down. This is how we enable ADB. We can see the detailed information about each of these processes. And just under that, we have the direct link for the Fire OS 7 Develop toolbox. So let's click on that and make sure you only click on the green download button. So let's click on that now. And this will download the toolbox directly onto your device. We can now click on install. That's now all done. 
we can now press the home key. That's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Uh, let me just say a big thanks to all of you guys who leave comments, who provide feedback, because really it's your information, your feedback that allows me to get toolboxes like this made. So I really do appreciate your support and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.